for this particular series, uh, After Every Winter, Soft Wind, I feel like there is a real uh, association to the year that we've had. And uh, for every winter, being the pandemic year, for example, Soft Wind is now. And can you tell me a little bit about sort of that shift for you between last spring and where we are today? So this time last year, it, actually right about this time, I spent most of my time outside, not in the studio. Mm -hmm. I was um, building a new vegetable garden. It really felt like a moment of arrested time. Let's just so, sort of slow down and think about what's happening. Why, why is this pande pandemic happening? And my actual instinct was to attend to the earth. Like mm -hmm. that's actually how it felt. Like we have disrupted it. H how do I tend to the earth? And it was just by paying attention paying close attention, you know, being um, aware of it, the Earth's generosity, what it gives us all of the time. So then from that, like, you know what I mean? That was kind of like the whole part of March and of April. Then going back, you eventually felt drawn back into the studio. And at that time, I felt it was a great opportunity to, you know, follow through with some of my own investigations that wanting to, um, paint more loosely, you know, wanting to be, bring more abstraction into the work, things like this. It, it, it just like, there was a gap where er, anything seemed possible. The whole world as we knew it had come to a stop. And this gave me the opportunity to rethink what I was doing and be in that pause and, you know, ask how could I bring more of myself, more of my own gesture to the work, more, more of what was, essentially of meaning to me. I guess that's what I was searching for. Nothing is solid. Everything is, is continually in motion and until um, you make a step toward that direction. And even then, um, we don't actually know what the outcome will be. So I wanted the paintings to have that, that feeling of, of many different potentials, right. not to be so fixed. You know, I think that the point of view in some of the previous paintings is quite fixed in its, in its viewpoint. And these ones I wanted to be more direct, you know, multi-directional, to have different entry points, to, to feel within the painting more space and within the um, possibility of viewing them to bring more of your own, you know, moment to that painting. Absolutely. I feel like there's a bit of that almost exhilaration that comes with being on the edge. Near death. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or on, on the, the precipice, on right? The, on the yeah. precipice, uh, on, in an edge state. In yes. the edge state, there's yeah. just a heightened sense of, uh, of reality, heightened sense of possibility. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I would like to talk a little bit about poetry text. You uh, often reference it in your work. Um, I know, like, in this case, Dylan, Neruda, um, Ruka has been a yeah. great influence Jim for Shuler, you. Jim Shuler, it turns up in this, um, in the drawings. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so with this one, uh, I know it's primarily in the drawings, but have you brought in your own words into some uh, of the pieces? Yeah, some of the, yeah, some of the pieces, like that piece has, uh, you know, kind of my own words, and some of the paper pieces have my own words. So they're just, uh, you know, maybe something I think of, a phrase while I'm working, or I'm, you know, I spend a lot of time looking at the paintings as much as actually making the paintings. And sometimes I uh, remember a fragment of poetry that gets mixed up with my own thought or, or just write down something that I'm thinking a phrase that comes to me when looking at the work. So sometimes it's before, sometimes it's after. Yeah, I think in one of the text pieces, The Necessary Speech of Roses, that's kind of the reference. It's like the, the, the necessity to still find beauty, to still look upon uh, things that are of, of value, that are, are just of telling us, a, reflecting back to us what it's like to be alive. You know, I think that's what flowers do. They you know, reflect our own life cycle. They, you know, develop underground in the dark, in difficult circumstances. They, you know, burst forth and they bloom and then they wither away, which is, I think, why they remain always fascinating for not just me, but many, many people, because they're just kind of like what we're doing. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And there's a, there's a real recognition for myself about them coming them flowers being just as they are as they are yes. all the time there's yeah. there's no dressing it up in any yeah other roses way. the roses the yeah. roses indeed yeah. yeah having a larger studio has allowed me to put things on the floor and 
walk around them in a really different way. Absolutely. That's been very freeing, very liberating. Yeah, absolutely. I've noticed like the works are quite large in this, in this show as well too. And that must've been a bit of a reaction. As yeah. Well. And the funny thing was, I remember, um, feeling at the beginning, I wouldn't do big works cause it felt like, um, you know, it just felt like it's kind of slower, smaller time. Mm. And then it, and it just didn't happen that way. I just felt really moved to tear off big pieces of canvas from a roll and just work go at it, go at it. Yeah. And that was, that was really good. And liberating. liberating. Yes, really for liberating. sure. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Gabriel, this piece, um, Rites of Spring, is primarily, I think it is all acrylic. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of the pieces that perhaps uh, you, did, you did on the floor. Yes. I can really see that aerial quality yeah. to it. Can you speak to me about sort of the areas where you use much more of a uh, mark making, frenzied approach? I see brick, I see flat areas and floor. Yeah, that's, you can see all of that. Um, I think that I don't even know what orientation it was when I started, um, but I, I um, had told myself I wasn't going to do any large pieces. And then I, I saw this uh, uh, scale and wanted it on the ground and I just started. And so I did start, you can see with the four in here, um, just um, I wanted to just make marks, not to have any relation to what was happening in my head to have any preconceived idea. So I started with the pouring, I started with, you know, dripping, like even Pollock like um, kind of uh, off the end of the brush. And then building it up with other, I wanted to use different uh, size of brushes, different kinds of marks. And then, you know, I, I, I couldn't leave it completely abstract. You can see that I had to get in there and do some things that are I used the shapes that were suggestive of, of things that became sort of petal-like or florals. But, you know, in this one, for instance, is very petal-like, but that's just a completely random pour. So then that suggested other things. And um, I just kept turning it around until it kind of naturally found its orientation. But it was um, very experimental. This is the uh, title piece to the show. Why did you choose that one? For me, this piece has kind of the whole cycle in it. It's got, you know, maybe that cooler March wind. It's got like the the earth colors that you're mentioning, the sages and those dark, darker greens and the coolness of the the air. Um, but it's got the the lightness of the emerging life in, in the spring. So I think it has all of those elements of thinking of the, you know, the, the cold wind of the pandemic and the, um, you know, the spring-like growth that is still emerging and happening even in the midst of that cold, coldness. Yeah. Absolutely. Darkness. This is one of the ones that has the text in it yeah. that we mentioned before. Can you tell me the text? Well, this, one, this text came, um, I can't remember where it came, if it was my own thought or in conjunction with something I was reading, but it's um, even though the cloud passes over the sun, uh, doesn't mean there is no sun. So even though the title is No Sun, it's like it's about like the whole experience of the cloud maybe passing, um, but the sun is still there, you know. So again, it's it's referencing the title, the title piece. It's like I think this has uh, um, the quality of that restlessness of the turning and turning and turning into something else like you know the metamorphosis of one thing into another I think is um, strongly in this piece. Is this a handprint or is this just the, the no, texture that arises? No it's just the texture there. from different Pulling layers. Yeah. yeah yeah oh I think I folded the canvas over. Oh 
Yeah, I think at one point I folded the canvas over and then pulled it apart. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you do that normally with the work? With the, in this showing. Okay. Yeah, not normally. Yeah. Because they were free and on the ground, like a carpet, I yes. just, I felt very, uh, you know, I wasn't taking it preciously. Sure. So, what will happen if I do this? And yes. Oh, I like that mark. I do remember that. I've forgotten that. Like that. Good. I'll go down. <laughs> I did do that. Yeah. Great. Yeah.